I'm Father Lampy. And I'm Father Schumacher. And we are, we are the, the Associates. Associates. Welcome back to Ask the Associates. We got some more questions. Here's one for you, Father. Okay. Um, is practicing yoga a sin and should it be avoided? Well, what do we mean by yoga? Like this distinction is actually quite important because um, yoga can mean a spiritual practice of a pagan religion. Um, and in which case that form of yoga, there's an attempt to try to unite oneself with false gods. And so that would be strictly forbidden. But usually in the United States, we don't mean that. Usually we mean certain stretches. Um, those stretches themselves are based upon the positions that were designed as prayers for that other form of yoga. So then we have a question. Well, can we take our bodies and put them in those positions and not have any spiritual consequences? Um, according to a document by the church, I think it was Christ the Water Bearer, I could be mistaken on the title, um, we are told that we cannot use yoga for the sake of a practice of prayer, but um, if we can separate the actions from the, the prayerful aspect of it and not have any kind of meditations or mantras or things as we're doing it, but strictly for stretches, then it would be okay. Um, Unfortunately, there are some places that offer yoga where the instructor is doing some sorts of mantras and other things, and by participating in that, a person could be subjecting themselves to um, possible influence from the instructor and put themselves into, into spiritual danger. Uh, my personal opinion, not the opinion of the church, but my personal opinion is that it is safer just to avoid it altogether uh, and use some other sort of exercising practices um, to avoid any potential uh, harm spiritually. But it is possible to do it um, without spiritual harm, just you would need to be really careful. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, last question. Um, okay. This is a fun one, kind of a personal one. Sure. What's your favorite scripture to pray with? Oh, that's, that is an interesting question. Here, you um, get the whole, you get the whole book. <laughs> Uh, I do like the whole Bible. Um, I'm currently going through uh, the Bible in the Year program, uh, and so it's interesting to, to make my way through. Um, I've been through the entire Bible once before, um, and so I don't necessarily have like a go-to that I always like to, to pray with on a regular basis. Um, I do kind of favor John 6, where Jesus talks about um, the Eucharist and how it really is his body and blood. Um, and so that's, that's a passage that I like, but there are many passages that I like, like the baptism of our Lord and how God says, um, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Uh, those who go to confession to me sometimes hear me mention that to them um, <laughs> to help remind us of God's love for us and how we're united through Christ and uh, become adopted sons and daughters of God through him. So uh, there are many passages that I like. Uh, currently going through the Bible in a year, I'm going through Leviticus, which anybody who's been through Leviticus knows that it's a lot of detailed information about sacrifices and how to do them and ordination and what that looks like. And for some people that can be quite boring. Um, I know previously when I've gone through Leviticus, I had that position, but I think now that I've had so much time with scripture and knowing so much about theology, um, I can see more of why God may have so much detail and the importance of it. Um, and so it's good for us to go through scripture, not just once and say, oh, well, I read that once before, but to come back to it again later when we have a greater sense of uh, greater depth of faith, greater understanding of symbolism, greater understanding of typology and the different things that God has presented to us in sacred scripture. Um, that was kind of a long answer. There's lots of passages that I like. Uh, those are just a few of them, and uh, hopefully that answers the question. But how about you? What would be your favorite? Yeah. Similarly, um, the Bible is a treasure. Um, the greatest minds in history have come back to it over and over and over again and, and have not finished the depths of its riches. Um, Augustine famously um, he despised the Bible when he was younger. He thought it was, you know, he was a great Roman rhetorician and, you know, he understood oratory and the great, you know, writers and of, of Roman and Latin, Latin literature. And he thought the Bible, because it was a translated document um, and a very ancient document, he thought, eh, 
not very impressive. Um, but when he came to the faith, he just found, especially the Psalms, to be so full of divine wisdom um, that he spent the rest of his life commenting on them um, to our great benefit. Um, the Psalms are, are wonderful. It's a great privilege as priests to pray the office every day, the divine office where we pray the Psalms on behalf of the whole people. And, and so many of them have struck me at different seasons of my young life at this point. Um, another passage that I pray with a lot is uh, the prologue of John, the first, the first chapters of John's gospel. Um, just a beautiful exposition of the entirety of the faith, um, from the creation through the redemption to the glory that we will have with him in the end. Um, the, uh, the story I, I, that comes to mind for me, especially when considering the Gospel of John, is uh, the story of the Jesuit missionaries in China. Um, they knew that they were heading into persecution. And so when they were being trained in the Philippines and in India and other places, they were told that they would have to memorize uh, the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, um, which is the Jesuit you know, kind of core of their spirituality. And they would also have to memorize the Gospel of John because they said, if you are ever in prison without any contact with other Christians, you will never run out of things to meditate upon if you know the Gospel of John. Um, so I highly recommend it to anyone who's looking for something to pray with. You can never, you can never exhaust the riches of, of uh, the Bible and certainly of the Gospel of John. Um, yeah, a little look into our spiritual lives, I guess. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you will be notified when a new episode is released. New episodes of Ask the Associates come out every Wednesday.